I'm Steve Bailey, and I have the pleasure of sitting here with one of my uh, one of my base heroes. And um, like it or not, it's Thank true. You. Thank you. It's true. Um, I, I knew about Jonas Helborg way before I met you, and I met you 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, there are a few questions I've been waiting patiently to ask you, and uh, <laughs> and I'm gl I never. 30 minutes ago, I never knew we'd have this opportunity, but now that I do, yeah. uh, one thing, I, I, I just want to ask a little bit about your, uh, your background, musical background. Did you go to school, or where, where, where did all that stuff come from? No, I actually never went to, uh, to musical school, any conservatories, any less like that. I'm pretty much self-taught, but what happened to me was, was I was playing rock and roll, right? And I was, I moved away from home when I was very young. When I was 15, I was living by myself. And one day, it was a knock on the door, and my sax playing neighbor asked if I want, he had heard me playing bass in my room, so he said, well, our band needs to needs a bass player, you want to come and try to play with us? And I went to play with them, and they were playing like free jazz. Wow. You know, so that was, and, and so I started, Making noise and shit, and I loved it. And I said, Were you playing upright bass? No, no, just oh, okay. like I couldn't tell by your. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. You know, and they loved it, and I, and I went home and thought, wow, I can play jazz, this is amazing. Because <laughs> there's no chord changes, <laughs> I know. Yeah, yeah. So, so then, then we played for a while, and the drummer played in another band, like more like a fusion band, and he said, well, maybe you want to come and play with my other band. And so I went there, and they actually played tunes and, and stuff. And I had no clue what the hell was going on. You know, I didn't understand anything. And uh, but uh, how old were you at that point? Like 14, 15. Yeah. 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 And uh, but the guitar player was very nice. So he started telling me, "Okay, this is what this is, and we play this song like this. This is what you're supposed to play uh -huh. here, and this is this scale, that's that chord." And then I got the bug, and then I started uh, studying myself. And, uh, and I, I got into it, and I started transcribing. I started reading books, harmony. But where did you learn to read notation? I mean, before you started to transcribe, or, or you did it in that in that process? In that process, yeah. I mean, you. Uh, I got got books on notation, and I got books on this, and I started reading scores with classical music and right. following the scores. You see, see, this is the bass line. It looks like that on the paper, and it sounds like that. Uh huh. Okay. And then just picking out stuff, and that went on. That um, from that age up to like 1920, I was do, doing that a lot, and. And actually studying a lot of classical music, like the theory, like counterpoint, tradition, harmony, like more advanced forms right. of uh, all that. And, yeah. and then I played, started playing with a lot of people in Sweden, a lot of uh, in jazz Sweden. and fusion. Yeah. Yeah. You know, play, playing standards, all that kind of stuff. But I think I first read about you in Downbeat magazine. Mm. And, and I c I'm trying to remember who you were playing with that, that they either reviewed an album, it could have been one of your albums or... or I think the first thing that appeared was Cobham talking about me in an uh, interview just when I was joining Mahavishnu with, uh, with, with Billy and John. We had done one gig, which was a trio gig for French television, just me, John McLaughlin and Billy Cobham. Uh -huh. And right after that he made an interview in Downbeat and he was yes. saying some nice things about me. Yes. We're yeah close to the same age so uh, when when I was reading all of that and Marcus Miller was just hitting the scene yeah. and and um, and everybody and I, I you know for me is is I never dreamed reading about you that one day we'd be sitting across from each other and I'd actually get to ask you these questions and uh, uh, it's it's fascinating the way you know the world the, our lives intertwine in and out right, so right, I right. And, and of course, you know, the, the rest for us bass players is history. I mean, and then you're, you're kind of pioneering the, the universal usage of the acoustic bass guitar, which still I don't know anybody that, that has been as prolific on that instrument as you. Oh, so thank you. I mean, I, 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 yeah, I guess that, that is the sound that's been in my head since I, since I started. Like, there was no acoustic bass guitar when I started. And uh, of course, you, yes, you had the Ernie Ball funny basses. Yeah, and Earthwood bass. Yeah, Earthwood, that, exactly. Yeah. And they yeah. had like Mexican funny basses. You can always tell a bass player because whenever they say the word bass, their hands they do this. Work, yeah. It's really weird. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and um, but 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 the sound idea was that. So I've always gravitated to trying to achieve that. And then when I met 
the luthier who made uh, John McLaughlin's acoustic guitars, the Shakti guitar and, uh. and uh, the nylon strung guitars that he played, he agreed to make me a, uh, that's, that's Abraham Wechter, uh -huh. who is one of the great luthiers, and, uh, and he made me a bass back in the 80s, early 80s. So that's and when I met you in, I think it was 1990, mm -hmm. somewhere in there, in 1990, 89, 91, I, I can't remember, it was, it was here in, it, in Frankfurt, mm -hmm. and you scared the hell out of me. Mm -hmm. Just, I don't know why, but, but I, I, I was just, I was a little intimidated, and then, and didn't really get to know you very well, mm -hmm. and, and kind of left intimidated. Really? Yeah, and I can't explain it, <laughs> but then getting to know you again over these last couple of years, okay. Uh, you're actually a really nice guy. Yeah. <laughs> but actually, <laughs> you're not the only one who's saying that. I, mean, uh -huh. I, I don't think of myself as intimidating at all, but other people have said exactly the same thing, and I don't know what the hell it is. I don't know what, why. I mean, I'm, I'm yeah, quite, I know. quite a problem. I know. It, it, um, well, you know, think good of people and like people, and but... Uh, well, I, I didn't even know you had a background playing rock. That makes me feel yeah. a, 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 we probably played some of the same songs growing up. Um, when did you get your first Warwick? Uh, that was about five years ago, six years ago. Uh -huh. yeah. and, uh, and the thing is that I know Hans Peter for maybe 25, 30 years because when I, when I first started I was already involved quite heavily here in the, in the, in the whole music industry instrument industry right and I was playing a wall at that time uh -huh. and wall was also another small European manufacturer and all British right yeah, British, yeah. yeah and at that time everybody was grouped together a little bit here on, on this floor here with like status and uh, over water and wall and Warwick and, and everything so we kind of know each other from back then and, and how I mean now and like I, I, I told Ryan earlier I mean I'm a I'm I'm a guest at the table, mm. for which I'm I'm grateful. But but seeing your role in the company as I've gotten to witness over the last few months, mm. going to Nam and, and seeing um, even more and more how kind of integrally entwined you are. I'm still figuring it out, but mm. but I see I see you in as as part of this Warwick thread now. That mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about how that evolved. I mean, that's not like a a, a, a it's not in a job description anywhere no, no, or anything no, like that. It's no, just an evolutionary process, as I see it. It, it is, and, it, and it's, uh, it's a matter of friendship to mm -hmm. begin with. And also it's a matter of being part of, of a larger project, like you say. You're in a band. You know, when you're in a band and you're really in the band together and it's a communal thing, you, you do tasks that need to be done. Right. You know, somebody needs to, to repaint the PA or, or put tires on the bus. You know, yeah. somebody's got to do it, and, yeah. and, uh, and so you find somebody to do it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the tires on the bus. Anyway. Yeah, if, if you if you <laughs> have that kind of money, yeah. No, but no, but but really, it's, it's always yeah. like uh, things come up, and and uh, you need to do it. But it all it, it's also the this whole thing that you talk to to Ryan about, which is the sense of community. Yeah, which is first of all. It sort of happened to me also when I started hanging with Hans Peter and whoever was around then. That was there. It, it is this really social phenomenon where it's actually a nice yes. music community and it opens up and gives opportunity to actually play music, which is kind of amazing in the in the in the music instrument yes. world and uh, and it spawns other things, Th things happen around, projects happen. And also for me, and I'm sure it's the same for you, the whole thing to be able to influence the instrument I play is a huge part yes. of it. Yes, to have, to have a voice in the actual design and construction and, and bringing that to market is, yeah. is a yeah. big... And, and, and also for me, it, it's, it's crucial for me to understand why when I do something to an instrument, it comes out sounding the way it does, so so that I can get to where I can forget about the instrument. So right. I just play it, and it, uh, right. you know, I speak, I, I sing with the, with the instrument. Well, I would uh, go so far as to say, and you know, and it goes all the way back to the uh, to what I said earlier. But but 
and taking it another step of somebody that, I mean, and you're a, a player. Mm. I mean, you're a musician first. Mm. I, I, I think it's fascinating for a company to have a person with your perspective on the real world of playing music, mm. the good, the bad, and the ugly. Mm. And then, and then see you in a, in a position where, one minute I look at you and, and your artist relations director, and the next minute I look at it and your your product development thinking, you know, wheel kicks in, and the next minute, mm. you know, you're trying to make sure everybody makes it to dinner, mm. and and uh, and nobody gets in a fight with the waiter. And um, oh, actually, I like the fights with the waiter. Well, well, yeah, I, I encourage may, that, maybe you, you were <laughs> egging that on, but but to me, that I mean, that, you bring stuff to the table that that. Uh, that you would have to hire three different people to do, or more to do, and then you throw in the musical part of it, and you yeah. guys playing uh, uh, with your uh, friends from India, and yeah. and and the level of complexity there, which has nothing to do with business, it just yeah. has to do with with music, yeah. and to be able to to uh, meld all those together into, and still find time to sleep. Yeah. You do much of that? Eight hours a day. Wow. Yeah, so. so speaking of that, speaking of, uh, I want to go back to music for a mm -hmm. second because this is something I wanted to ask. Um, uh, I, I hope to always be a student of music and hearing um, the kinds of compositions and rhythms and, and things that you've been playing this week, I, I started inquiring um, and trying to learn a little bit and I learned that you have written a book. Is this true? Well, go on. Well, a, a book about, and that's what I want to ask yeah. you about. About, uh, um, is it a base book? Is it? Is it? Oh, a, I, a new I, have, I have two books published. I th I heard there was a because I was asking um, one of your your uh, tabla players. Mm -hmm. I was asking wh what what can I study to make myself more aware of this and and more uh, comfortable with it, and and he recommended me to you. So tell me what oh, you have okay. that will help me out. Okay, no, okay, that no, uh, because I did two books long time ago, thirty years ago. I did like a chord book and like a slap book. Yeah, but I've but already but got but those. I wore those out. <laughs> I'm talking about some <laughs> no, new no. stuff. Yeah, no, I well, I am working. I have been working on for a long time, and probably still will be working on it for an even longer time on uh, two conce concepts of of books or videos or whatever it will come out to be. One, of course. Is is about this uh, Indian rhythmic stuff, but applied. that's the one I want. Yeah, but yeah. applied to a Western mind. Right. And what you can do it, and uh, I mean, not in such a hurry because uh, John McLaughlin and Salva Ganesh they did a DVD uh -huh. explaining the basics of it, which is which is good, which is really very clear and concise and, and for just learning the fundamentals of of, of what that. Uh, corner call as it's called is yeah so that I, I don't need to do that that, that that's there and what I want to uh, do to further explain it is how that applies to to Western music because I don't want to teach I don't play Indian music I don't want to teach Indian music I play with Indian musicians right but I'm I'm a Swede I'm a North European and my sensibility and language and uh, aesthetic is of that ilk and yeah. when I play I'm, I I try to be myself, but I pick up knowledge. You know, I pick up knowledge from American music, from West uh, African music, from and but more than anything from Indian music. But I take that and I try to compose music as I understand it with it. And I try and I can play with Indian musicians, but I don't. I don't pretend to play Indian music. But there is so much information in, in two aspects of Indian music that we as Westerners need, because we have excellent uh, methods of, uh, of harmony, of, uh, of form, uh, but we have no, um, and, and a certain aspect of composition on, on, on that, but we have no real concept of melody or method of melody, and we have not very bad rhythmical teaching. To understand, limited, yeah, yeah, but yeah, but very, very limited. It, it yeah. doesn't explain at all the the complications or complexities of, of rhythm and how how you can actually build it and how right. it hangs together. And uh, just such a simple thing as as a ritardando or like you you go from one tempo to the other, 
I, I believe personally that intuitively we will do it in relation to the other tempo. It's not like we go, this tempo is totally unrelated to this. I think there's an absolute relationship. And so they're kind of all on a grid. Yeah, they're exactly. just in different exactly. places on the grid. It, it, it's, uh, it, it, yeah, exactly. And, and that, that you get from, from the Indians, they have that. They, they shift from, uh, from 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, but with the same pulse. Right. You, you can call it quantization or whatever you want. Right. But in, in between that. Uh, and the other thing, of course, is, is the, the melodic and the ornamental aspects of Indian music which is on a level that we just forgot. Yeah. We used to have it a lot in the, in the Baroque era, uh -huh. where ornamentation was a big thing. You wrote right. out the piece and then this little funny sign Twists and it was free for interpretation and yeah. everybody had their own drills and trills and stuff and, yeah. and it was nice like that. But they really have it and, and if you think about it in relationship to harmony, you have the Indian thing where you play to a drone, you have like the tonic and the fifth, like running in the background all the time, and all the notes of the rug, which very simplistically would we would call a scale or a bunch of notes, which doesn't explain the whole thing because a rug can be the, the same scale and you have 10 different rugs that are of that scale. So there are other elements to it. But if we just simply for a Western mind think of it as a scale, and you play that, uh, when you play like a classical piece in Indian music, you start with what's called the elap, which is the slow piece without time, and you just explore the melodic possibilities of that mm -hmm. scale, right? And and to kind of like the cadenza in in older classical music, where where you just have no, because the cadenza you it is in time and it is uh, you take the met thematic material from the from the piece and then you do something with ah. it, you improvise something with. It. This is more about very slowly exploring the the power of the individual notes to your tonic. Ah. Because each note has a power or a relationship or say a gravity to this this tonic and to the fifth and then they have that to each other. And if you think about that, this is how we understand music because we remember, even if we don't have this running all the time, we remember where the tonic is. If yes. you temporarily shift it, which could be modulation, which could just be another chord. Right. In this case, we right. temporarily shift the tonic. So now, if you play a melodic note, that relates both to your new chord, chord right. tonal center, and to the original one. So, so you have all these these kind of uh, gravities that happen, like a solar system, that pull each other. Mm -hmm. And to, if you really think about it, it's all these melodic aspects that makes up the power of harmony. Hmm. Because a chord is, is mel mel several melodies in action at the same right. time, and they do create all these tensions, but it's the me melodic power, or whatever you want to call it, in my mm, understanding, that does all this. And they and the gravity of the notes exactly. leading and in, the in different directions uh, and uh, exactly, uh, pulling exactly, against exactly. Like, almost like a, 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 an atom or something like that. Right. Spinning exactly, exactly, exactly. So, wow. so, so I want to explore that and find the link between the Indian way of understanding it and the Western way of understanding ah. it. And that, that would be... So do you have much question. of this already written? Because I, I want copies before I leave. Oh right. I'm not leaving <laughs> the continent okay. until I get okay. something to read okay. on the plane I'll, on the I'll, way I'll home. Or, or, or I get a copy of this video me. so I can I can review this. Well, I've got one other question for you. And, and your, your uh, uh, association with Warwick, um, where how do you see this company evolving? And you know, I, I, I'm, I'm curious personally, mm. your perspective on it, and, and I'm sure whoever's uh, viewing this might, might be curious, what, what, what's going on here? Yeah, I'm, I'm curious too actually, because it's taking on a life that I couldn't see two years ago. I mean, uh -huh. I, when, I started, when I was getting my first basses from Hans Peter, it was just another, okay, cool, I got some more basses and I'll play this bass, these are cool instruments. And then he asked me to do the amplifier line, and I got more and more involved. Right. And but then what? What I'm seeing is this uh, coming together of a lot of people, a lot of, of musicians, which is the wonderful thing. Right. And and Hans Peter is really pushing everything. Like support normally uh, with a company, you have like one or two artists, and then say, okay, we got we got our. Start stuff, but it's not about that here. Right. It's not about one being up and one being down and one being over the other. It's just, it's an incredible community, 
and it's expanding and God knows where it's going to go because it, it can really be yeah and and the other thing is uh, the company is open to everybody's needs I need the base like this no problem you get it right you, I need the, the my amp to sound like this no problem we we'll deal with it and that that is the fantastic thing it really is a something that has started to take a life of its own uh, and really really progressing expanding and becoming something yeah t it, 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 there's like this critical mass where, yeah. where all yeah. these elements are coming together and maybe yeah. I, I'm just seeing it for the first few months of, but but I, I mean coming yeah. here and just it, seeing no, but how it's becoming more and more exciting more and more exciting every year and uh, you know having somebody like John B who's really a, an ambassador for for the stuff that ha happened before us right you know I can I had incredible talks with John B at the NAM show about about the time when I wasn't even born when he was playing with all these oh. people that you and me admire and, right. and could only dream to meet. Right. He played with them and he, he relates this history and you yeah. had, had Bootsy was down here sitting in this chair talking and he said some incredible stuff. Right. And 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 the um, the life lessons that happens here now is it's incredible. It's it's a life experience that that is really yeah, it's, it's it's fantastic. It's really about it's really about music. It's about life. It's about about human beings, about the human experience, about uh, about uh, yeah, all, all that all that good stuff. I don't know. See, those are attributes that are rarely uh, uh, extolled on a on a company. Yeah. So think about yeah. that. Yeah. I'm just calling it as, as I see it from the outside. Yeah. It's usually. Yeah. Uh, uh, they're successful, they keep growing, they're big, they make a lot of money, but those very things, I think, are the things that keep relationships together. Yeah. Uh, uh, as well as success, and yeah. obviously success is going on, but, but that seems to be a byproduct of all that other stuff that you just talked about. Right, yeah. And, 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 and that, what, how, how cool is that? How cool is that? Exactly, exactly. And it's, uh, it's a, no, it's a great thing to be, to be a part of. I'm really happy. I'm glad I came, Good. for no other reason than this interview, because I've, I've, a few things have been bugging me for a long time, and we got them straight. Brilliant. Steve, Thanks. Thank